Hey Switch, Sam Roberts here. Welcome out to Are We There Yet? Today we're gonna to take a look at our family dynamics and the part you play. We're very, very passionate about reaching the next generation for Christ. Why? Because you are the leaders of tomorrow and of today. But the thing is, to be an effective leader as you begin to grow is to identify many times what is the foundation as you grow in leadership and it comes through your family. Now, when I say family, a lot of things come to mind to you as I just even throw that word out there. Maybe you start thinking about Thanksgiving or relatives you wish you weren't around or maybe the fact that you fought with your sibling on the way to switch or maybe it's that, you know what, you're sitting there thinking about, man, I don't want to go home to what I've been a part of. Or maybe it's all these great thoughts about, man, I love my mom and dad. I love my brother or my sister. And you have a lot of great thoughts about families. And the fact is, families can look like a lot of different things, can't they? You have mom and dad both at home with brother and sister and the 2.5 kids and the white picket fence and the dog. Or man, sometimes it doesn't look that way, does it? Sometimes things didn't work out between mom and dad and you live with one or the other of them in different times and then there's maybe you have a stepfather or a stepmother and maybe there's stepbrothers and sisters that are involved. Families can look like any number of different things but no matter what your family looks like God can utilize your family and your found to build a foundation for you in Christ that you can launch off of a leadership platform to become who God has called you to be. And what we're going to do in the context of this series is begin to talk about how God will utilize your family, no matter what it looks like, to do a great work in you. In fact, in Scripture, the Bible says that he who began a good work, he being God, Jesus, as he began a good work in you, he will be faithful to complete it until the day of Christ Jesus. Did you catch that? It's not that, oh, well, because mom and dad are perfect or because I have a great sibling relationship, he's going to complete it. It's that no matter what, it's God who's faithful to complete that work that he has started in you. And he will be faithful to complete it. So let me tell you guys a little bit about my family growing up. Well, I was one of four kids. Now, I had an older brother and an older sister, then there was me as one of the middle kids, and then there was my younger sister. Now, no bitterness as a middle kid, but uh, you know, uh, growing up, you get your older brother, who I am never seemed to be old enough to do the things that my cool older brother and sister could do, but then at the same time, you got little sis, who she's, well, the baby of the family, so she gets all the extra special treatment, if you know what I mean. Me? I'm stuck in the middle. Can I get an amen from all them middle kids out there? No bitterness, though. Actually, I tell you, Man, I had a great family, a great upbringing, a great relationship with my mom and my dad, and a great relationship with my brothers and sisters. Even though at times that was a little bit of a sibling rivalry relationship, if you know what I mean, but all things were done out of love for each other. And we had a great, great relationship. Uh, let me tell you a story one time about me and my older brother. Now my brother, to set the context, he was big. He was 6'7", going at a smooth, cool 275, 280, a big man. He was a college football player and he was home on break. Now my brother wanted to take me to go see a martial arts film. I know it doesn't look like it, but back in the day, I used to take Taekwondo and I was good at it, at least so I thought I was. So we go one time to this movie and I had just gotten out of my karate class. And man, what happens when you go to a movie where there are a lot of fighting and stuff? You get a little chip on your shoulder, don't you? Like, anybody here mess with me? I'm gonna take you down, right? So we're going into this film already revved up. We go in, we're running a little bit behind. So we're grabbing our popcorn, grabbing our Cokes, and we're rolling into the theater. Everybody's already sat down. We're having to go through this aisle. As we're scooting through the aisle, the front of my brother's thighs, because they're too stinking big to get down the aisle, bump the chair in front of him. Now, normally, no big deal, right? Brush it off. But this guy that was sitting down in front of him apparently was on his first date with this chick and he was wanting to try to impress her. So he's turning around trying to show her how he's not gonna let us get away with such nonsense. And so he begins to stare us down. 
unbelievable. And I'm like, oh my gosh, are you kidding me? We're gonna throw down in the middle of this theater. And this guy wouldn't, wouldn't stop. So he was, he turns around and starts staring us down like this. Like he's sitting back like this, he turns around. And just starts looking at us. And I'm like, are you kidding me? And I'm like, oh my gosh, I, I'm, I'm starting to go back. I, I'm getting my popcorn and my Coke and I'm scooting back in my seat like, oh my gosh, this dude's about to just do something to us. I'm getting all nervous, I'm getting worried. I'm all cowered down. And then my brother, right, he sits down in his seat and he sits down and he sees this dude looking at him and he won't, the guy won't turn back around. And so my brother just gets right up on him and just says, you got a problem? And the guy's like, well, he turns back around and his wife, it's okay, and I'm like, yeah, you got a problem? What do you want? I all of a sudden start becoming Mr. Mr. Macho, right? Ready to take this guy on. Why? Well, because I realized I wasn't alone. I realized that I was a part of a family. All right, so Charles, how old are you? 19. Chandler? 11. All right, so Chandler, this question is at you. What's it like having Charles as an older brother? Probably just looking up to him, you know, because he's my older brother. I always want to do what he does, you know. So Charles, then to you, what, what do you do then for Chandler to try to lead and set a good example for him? Um, I think setting a good example in everything that I do. So if I'm going to church a lot and trying to serve there, when I come home, I'm not a completely different person. I'm still trying to live by the Bible and stuff like that. And then another thing is just having fun and loving on him sometimes because Instead of being so bossy like I can be, just hanging out just because, not trying to always lead him, boss him around and do stuff like that. How about you? Maybe that is a, similar to your story. Maybe it's not. Maybe your situation is totally different. And you're like, man, Sam, my situation ain't nothing like that. I can't get along with my brothers, my sisters, or my mom, my dad. And it's just a bad situation I find myself in. Maybe it's just more benign. It's not really neither bad nor good. And mom and dad seem to be kind of absent in some ways. And you just kind of do your own thing. And you just kind of do whatever. Whatever the case may be. Here's something that's interesting. When you think about God's plan for your life. You know that the Bible tells us that it's God. He who began a good work in you will be faithful and just complete it until the day of Christ Jesus. So it's God who's going to complete that work in you. Not necessarily mom or dad, although they're very influential. Maybe not even your brothers and sisters, but it's God who's going to do that work. And here's the thing. God knew exactly who he was going to create you to be. In fact, the Bible says that God knit you together in your mother's womb. So God knew the family you needed to be in to become the person that God wanted you to be. You're exactly where God wants you, whether that situation is really great or whether that situation is not so great. God will use all things, the Bible says, to work together for the good of those who love Him. And when you submit yourself to God and His plan for your life, it works out to be good. So you might say, well, man, Sam, I didn't choose my family, this situation I'm in. And you're right. You didn't, but you can choose how you respond. How should you respond in such a way that can bring change? Ephesians 5 actually tells us that, you know what? We should submit to each other out of reverence for Christ. Why is that? It's because when we submit to one another and we serve them, things begin to change. So it really all boils down to this. You ever heard somebody say, hey, you know what? You should do unto others as you would have them do unto you. Sure, it's the golden rule, right? Who doesn't know that? Well, where did that come from? You hear it said all the time. It actually comes from the book of Luke, chapter six, verse 31, where Jesus says, you should do unto others as you would have them do unto you. That statement, why is it so golden anyway? It's because it's so powerful and it changes everything around you. You know, in fact, I know for me growing up, I did this a lot with my little sister. We were separate, our age separation was such that, you know what, I was a senior in high school when she was a freshman, right? Most brothers are like, seriously, little sis, get away from me. I just wasn't that way about my little sis. I was 
protective other as protective of her as many big brothers are, but also I was just inclusive other of her. I didn't care if she came along and hung out with me and my friends or anybody around us or came to basketball practice and chilled out with us. I tried to make sure to include her. Why? Because I would want to feel included. And you know what? Hey, it's pretty cool to hang out with seniors, right? And that's what she got to do as a freshman. And so now, today, if you were to ask her, she'd say, hey, I'm one of the best big brothers ever. I should get a pin or something, right? Why? Well, because I just simply treated her the way I would want to be treated. How does that work out for you? Well, as I said, maybe you're in a great family. Things are going well. Maybe you're in a bad situation. Maybe you feel alone. No matter where you find yourself, if you will do unto them as you would want done unto you, things change. And God begins to do a work as Christ in you and through His power, you begin to lay down your selfish tendencies and the things that you want. And remember, to submit to someone else and serve them, then what happens is that culture changes. And no matter whether it's your mom or your dad or your stepmom, stepdad, whether it's your brothers and sisters or your stepbrothers and sisters or whoever you find in your family context, no matter what it is you do, when you treat others the way you want to be treated, things begin to change. Because at the end of the day, you're showing God's love to someone else. You may think, but I'm just a youth, what am I gonna do? My mom and dad, or my dad, or my mom, you just don't understand my situation. Well, what I do understand is this, is that God's love changes everything. And when we display His love in a selfless manner and do unto others as we would have them do unto us, God's love always wins.